I didn't see you there. I was so busy reading The Hobbit with wine. Hello, welcome to the Best Dang Book Club on the internet. And it's even better because it's free. Uh, this is the Nerdist Book Club. Hi there, I'm Maud Garrett. And joining me as always are my co-hosts, uh, Nerdist Editor-in-Chief, Rachel Hine. Hello, Rachel. How's Hello. quarantine going? Well, there's my cat. He's a uh, snoozing Rachel right there. Rachel Quarantine. So yes. Yes. Ever? Have you heard that sight- one? I haven't heard that one. I haven't Quarantine. Heard it. Mm. No, you're the pun master. Uh, quarantine's going all right, but it's better now because I'm with y'all and I got wine. That's right. And of course, we've got DC Daily's Hector Navarro, who's muted himself, perhaps. Hello. No, I don't think. Am I muted? No, you no, can hear me, right? very quiet. No, that's what it was. I just heard a loud wine bottle pop before and uh know that that was some good about to start i'm polite like a <laughs> hobbit i know when to be quiet like a manners hobbit. are so important <laughs> as we will be discussing just before we get into that though happy earth day everyone or middle earth day as we've decided to call it since middle Maude, earth is when did you think of that how long I've have you been it. sitting on that all day today I just read it. Is that Stephen? Is that you? Did you do that yet? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's just, I'm going to steal <laughs> that joke and say for a while. No, thank you, Stephen, for giving us that <laughs> one. Um, we are, of course, reading The Hobbit, and this is part two. So we will be covering chapters seven to 12. We're supposed to read up to chapter 12, stop at 12. I read chapter 12 because I, I'm just a badass like that. Hmm. Anyway, we're going to be discussing this for you. Make sure you're subscribing to Nerdist. We're going to be doing this every single week. Uh, this book was chosen by you in a vote, which is pretty cool. Um, so with that, I guess, getting too spoilery and specific, what are your general thoughts about this next chunk of book? I'll start with you, Hector. This is my least favorite part of the book. Let me tell you why. First of all, no Gollum slash Smeagol. <laughs> and secondly, no dragon as of yet so it's the most boring <laughs> part of the let's get through let's go th- let's hear here's some elves here's some spiders here's baby bjorn let's get through this section as quick as possible so that we can get to the misty mountain and get to that dragon did you think it was slow no but i thought it was again let me make the only comparison i'm going to make to this live <laughs> action movies in this episode i'm going to try to not co- bring them up as, as much I don't but um you. <laughs> but if you've seen the film uh the hobbit the desolation of smog like the smog stuff is great it's all the it's all the stuff in lake town is like why are we here mm. why do i care about this stuff i don't care about the people of lake town i like me some dwarves and some wizards and some hobbits and some dragons i don't like me some regular ass people being sad on a lake i don't like it so sorry um, Luke Evans. aragon is a regular ass people is he though or is he a king Okay, makes a good point. We can get into that right? if you want. <laughs> right, a strider, a king. All I'm saying is there were sections of the book that I didn't find boring, but I definitely, because I knew what was coming, not only because I've read this book years ago, but you know, pop culture, I'm like, hey, let me get to the to the really the inspired stuff. stuff. This felt a little bit meandery, but you know, that's Tolkien. That's what he does, baby. That's his specialty. Um, since my mom is hmm. technically like the fourth unofficial member of our book club, I ran it by her. And she said she wanted to give this book to me when I was about 13. She's like, in between 13 and 15, I wanted to give you The Hobbit to read. I was just quite worried about the fact that it's a very slow book and that mm-hmm. you guys could be bored. It sounds like this middle chunk is the slower part. Um, I found like they were kind of going in circles a little bit, but that's kind of the point of Mirkwood. But Rach, while you're telling us about your thoughts, Hector, just tilt your camera forward a little bit because the, the caption, your subtitle where your name is, is kind of cutting off half your mouth. So, Rach, Rach off you go. Wait, wait, where do <laughs> um, I, further away or closer? <laughs> tilt, tilt it down, down a little bit This more. way? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Look at Maud. Um, well, I will just Aragon, say that girl. Brian- Aragon. <laughs> <gasps> just came to me. <laughs> We got a drink for that one. We got a drink for that one. <laughs> I am no Aragon. man. <laughs> Aragon, girl. Uh, Brian VS uh, also accidentally read to chapter 15. And uh, Philippe Hunt, who is uh, in the future, says, great way to start my Thursday morning. I agree with Hector. We're in the filler part of the book. Miss Necromancer says, I thought the spider part was dope. Although, um, you know, oh, I lost. I thought the spider part was dope, though. It can, it's. I can read. Uh, I I agree with Hector a little bit. There is that sort of when they're lost and there is a little bit of the meandering and roundabout, but 
that is, like you said, Maude, the part of the book where they are supposed to feel like, how are we getting out of this? Every time we see these dang elves, they disappear. Yeah. The spider part scared me as a kid, scares me now. I thought really? that part was really well done. Oh yeah. Well, I mean- And it's funny. Hmm. I, found, I found them to be more emotionally manipulative than physically manipulative. <laughs> well, that's also very scary. So like, there's like there's like mean girl spiders that are like teasing yeah. each other, that kind of thing. They're like, yeah, oh, they were. You. <laughs> oh, we caught you. We might eat you, might not, but we might. <laughs> yep. At see again, that just reminds I. That's a scary thing for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Main ogre says reading to chapter twelve is such a Slytherin thing. Swear to God, <laughs> Hector. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you giggle at that? That's not funny. Not funny. I will definitely no. giggle. It is funny, but um, you know, no, I, I was I was just waiting for something to happen, and obviously, chapter twelve, something kind of happens, and so I was like, oh, okay, here we go, and then realized that I'd read too far ahead. But I'm getting. I have moved from reading the book to Audible, and I'm really enjoying Rob Inglis, I believe it is, who's um, doing that one. I'm about yes. it. I think that out of all of the ones that I heard samples of, this one was the better one. But again, you just is can't. It this one. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Mm. So far, it does have I've been listening to that. Up. Yeah, it has, I mean, whatever. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I've been loving the Audible. I especially liked Bilbo's like sneaky spider song that he did where he's like, <laughs> it wasn't It wasn't that great, but. Well. I will say though, I really liked the fact that they finally acknowledged and I had to make it up on the spot. And I'm like, yeah, every time we burst out into song, like the elves in the first uh, third of the book, just singing the same song that they were you know, making up on the spot. I was just like, all right, this is like a chorus. This is, this feels like it's a musical. And so Bilbo's finally just like, whoo, you know, I had to make up some little ditty on the spot and that was not easy. I was like, no, it but I be. think, but I think the elves would know because a magic B there, they sing quite a bit uh, for funsies, but I did like that. He's sort of, I really like that section of this, um, this section of the book that we read um, with the spiders because it feels like with Gollum, he's figuring it out and sort of running away and, and figuring out what powers he has, but still doesn't really, he doesn't want to tell them that he has the ring because it feels mm. like cheating to him. And I love this part because he goes from, you know, grumbling about food and just being full miserable, which totally get it. Again, I have Hobbit sensibilities when he's like, uh, instead of the meat, I wish there was butter. I was like, you have a good point, my friend. Um, but that he, he tells them about the ring and they still are so impressed with him, but also that he really risks his life and goes from, you know, kind of scrambling behind them to making the decision that, okay, he's the only one left. He just has to do it. I think that's when we see the best of Bilbo, when he's mm -hmm. forced into a situation. If he was given yeah. a choice, he would never choose this. He would not have gone on the adventure. The whole time, as we're saying, he's complaining the entire way. I think the reason why I didn't re retain too much of this um, third of the book was because I basically drank every time Bilbo was like, I don't want to be here. Like, <laughs> the complaints that come out of everyone's mouths, it's just like, just deal with it. You said you'd do it, commit to that notion and go. But when decisions are made for Bilbo, Gandalf saying that he's going to be in the adventuring party um, when they had to uh, climb to the top of the canopy to see where they are within mm -hmm. the forest. And it was just like, I didn't have a choice. They basically made me do it. But that's when he shone. And I think that we're starting to see that he is capable. And like all capable people, more of the work is going to be delegated to them. But I do like his arc because he is starting to find out his own potential. And not only are the exactly. rest of the party really quite admiring him. Initially, they were just like, who is this guy? And more and more, they're like, oh, wow, he's saved us a bunch of times. He's got a magical item. He's actually really observant. He's understanding scenarios. And he's, I kind of like a lot of the time with the chosen one, because in a way, Bilbo is the chosen one. Like he was chosen to be the burglar of the party, which was the crucial member. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know their potential until they're doing it. And again, mm -hmm. I put the uh, parallels with Harry Potter. So did W actually in the comments, aside from Harry Potter and the Hobbit, are there any other cool talking spiders in fantasy? So mm -hmm. I think that I actually see quite a lot of parallels that are happening, but only because Absolutely. I've just watched all the movies again for Harry Potter because- The like, Harry Potter movie, yeah. I mean- Because of course. The, the, the more that we, if we were to continue reading the Lord of the Rings books, um, I feel like, and even just with the Hobbit, it's very clear how much a remix of this classic 
type of fantasy Harry Potter is, which is good. It makes me appreciate when you go and read this stuff, it does make me appreciate Harry Potter stuff more because I'm like, it was so smart and so clever, but took these classic fantasy tropes and characters and moments. And uh, I agree with everything that y'all two are saying. The the bit with the spiders was fantastic. And especially because it was, it was pointed out in the book, you know, our narrator's telling us then Bilbo really did feel after mm-hmm. he was killing a couple of spiders, like he was a badass is basically mm. what it says. And he can kind of continue to go and be Direct a badass. Quote. And, yeah. And he, and he names his, uh, his sword sting, which mm. I think is great. Um, there's another comment from Lisa Hill. Lisa says, I had to switch to audiobook because I was yeah. having a hard time making myself read this section. Yeah. And I feel like I agree. I think everybody can agree. This is that slow part, but I still enjoyed the book because I think it's still very well written. And I think that this part too will benefit from this is the type of book you got to read aloud to a kid you got to read yeah, aloud mm-hmm. and it should be performed and with the songs and all of that sort of thing um uh there was another comment too uh reading dodo kiwi says this mm. book is incredibly episodic it feels really start and stop with no overarching yeah it feels like tolkien's just making this shit up as he goes like yeah. and and that's that's a there's a charm to that but it definitely feels like that I noticed it the most with this hindsight of having lost Thorin, where it was just like, you, it all played oh, out. Oh, yeah. You're and like, then right what? at the end, but he wasn't there the whole time. I'll tell you why. And then kind of go back and then tell that whole story. I was like, is there a better way to do that? Because I found that to be incredibly confusing. I listened to this whole part. I actually had to go back and listen to it again. And I was like, hmm. oh. Wait, what part did we lose Thorin? Um, After the spiders. Mm-hmm. But we're still, or in the really, woods. the whole time with the spiders because well, that's they the thing because you don't know that it, you don't know when he's gone. He's just all right. of a sudden at the end. So as many an aside, of them. Oh, by the way, you may have noticed that Thorin wasn't there. That's because he wasn't. And I'm like, what? You got to tell me that. Mm-hmm. I don't. I kind of liked that too, though, because it's it again. It's sort of like when uh, shows or movies do flashbacks or different things where you learn something more about mm-hmm. the character. It was essentially as Bilbo is or. Yes, Bilbo. I thought I said Frodo for a second. Um, (laughs) Rescuing all of the dwarves and all of this madness is happening and they're running around and they're letting them loose. And then poor, uh, is it Bomber? Yeah. The big guy. Poor Bomber. I feel bad for Bomber. They pick Mm -hmm. on him. Mm Yes. He's a chunky, he's a chunky nugget. But what's really cool is the fact that they're luring, the magic that is used here to lure them is to provide them with dreams of the thing that they want the most. Mm -hmm. And that is comfort and comfort foods. And I think that was like really well done. Like this sort of like the the way that they've done exploitation. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What would, uh, what would your spider, spider trap dream be? That's a very personal question, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. we've, been in, we've been in quarantine for like I seven know. Weeks. I, I was as I was saying it, I was like, I'm not um, actually going to answer that uh, myself. <laughs> but um, no, I think too, just about the comparisons to The Hobbit. Um, uh, Hector, you were on the panel that we did last summer at Comic Con, the Hero's Journey. Um, do you remember that? I can't even remember anything. <laughs> I know, that I know. All. Comic-Con is always like nonstop, but it was, it was different people from different, uh, backgrounds. People are into video games, mm-hmm. um, comics, et cetera. And talking about, you know, it is this framework that you work within and, and in recent years you see branches off of that. There's also the heroine's journey, which usually has a lot more romance in it, take it mm-hmm. or leave it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but the idea I think here is stylistically Tolkien is it is very plot driven and it is very much this, you know, fun, silly adventure. And with Harry Potter, as we learned when we read through all of those books um, on the previous version of the show, mm-hmm. we you see how much character work is put into these these stories. It's the same for me with prequels. Um, I'm catching up on Better Call Saul right now, and I'm usually very wary of a prequel because if you know what happens to a character or in the story, the characters themselves have to be super compelling to me to not feel like I already know what's going to happen. And that's one that I think is doing it so well where you don't feel like, okay, I know Jimmy McGill, spoiler alert, it's the same guy, it's Bob Kirk, but um, that... Harry Potter, even if you knew, okay, this is a hero's journey and there are gonna be these elements to it and the fantastical world obviously is a huge part of that. But I think 
developing the pieces in that structure are so important. And I think that's why a lot of folks also gravitate towards Lord of the Rings as this epic mm -hmm. story versus The Hobbit is fun. And a lot of people loved it as a kid, but it doesn't, A, it's one little thing, but B, it really expands on those ideas with several characters and, and brings that entirely out into this much bigger picture with mm -hmm. so many more actual characters that you care personality about. Personality um, traits as well. Yeah, yep. which we're having yeah, to be a lack of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, I, some of the dwarves totally stick out to me and mm -hmm. I, I know who they are. I'm still terrible with their names. Gonna if I could line. actually quote Miss Necromancer who says, I mean, mm -hmm. I know Thorin and Gloin since he looks like Gimli and Bomba because he's, and I quote, thickums. <laughs> but then there's just old guy, youngish, hotter guy, thin face guy. Yeah, totally. Like oh, well, that's no rhyme. Who does, um, who, I know, is it Lee Pitt? No. Yeah. Who play the hot dwarves in the movies? I oh, Philly, Philly and Killy. Philly yeah, and Killy. Okay. Yeah. It's theme, Adrian. But... I took night. Or Aiden. Mm -hmm. He was on um, the sci fi, sh British sci fi show. No, I think he's full to dark played, too, right? That's not the guy um, who played Thor and Oakenshield, right? Because he's no. also a hottie. No, that's, yeah, Richard, that's Richard. Richard Armitage. 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 Yeah. Right. Armitage. Well, it's funny you guys are saying this. Game Wizard 001 said book dwarves have little to no personality. Film dwarves are easier to keep up with who is who compared to the book, at least. Still too many, but better by comparison. Um, I also want to just, while we're talking about the dwarves and the hot dwarves and all that with Philly and Killy, you were talking about hot British guy with the darker hair, but the more strawberry blonde guy, who's also an absolute babe, so much so that I went on IMDb, little did I know he's a Kiwi who was, um, do you guys remember when Ryan Gosling was young Hercules? Sure. Cause it was yeah. my favorite show when I was in my early teens and obsessed and had a massive crush. Mm -hmm. It was filmed in New Zealand, of course, like Hercules and Cena, they did a spin-off, Young Hercules. Eolus, mm -hmm, the it. sidekick, was that actor. So he's ah, gone from cool. like being 19 years old, acting alongside Ryan Gosling in like this no one ever saw it show except Maud Garrett. And now he was a dwarf. And I was just like, good on this Kiwi. That's oh, there he awesome. is. A Aiden Turner and Dean O'Gorman. So is Dean O'Gorman the one you're talking about? Aiden Turner's yeah. the one I'm talking about. He yes. was on, he's on Pole Dark, which I still haven't watched, which is, doesn't make sense because it's like sexy. Guys, we're off track here. We're supposed piece. to be talking about chapter seven. Um, we're lying. I'm so I'm so sorry, but <laughs> everyone who knows us knows we love a good tangent. Actually, now can um, bother can you guys no. just can you just dominate my feed um, with Philly and Killy, Aiden and um, Dino Gorman? Could you just like just drop them in? My yeah, got it. Mentions. Also, That'd be nice. tell me what show I'm thinking of. It was a UK. He was like I think a, penny a vampire. Dreadful or something. Oh, vampire. being human, but the British version. Yes, yes. Mm. That's teamwork. Cool. That's how it's done. Let's yep. talk about I chapter seven. <laughs> yeah. The big part about chapter Fine. seven is that we are introduced to another character and he's mm -hmm. a shapeshifter. This is really cool because it's another lot of magic that we haven't seen before. Um, Bo Bjorn, baby Bjorn is no baby. Yep. He's a it's big taking bear. all of my uh, willpower to not sing the baby Bjorn theme song because mm. we will get in trouble. <laughs> but just know... Yeah, I hear it in my head. And also, I have to uh, point to clarification. He's not a shape shifter. He is, as Gandalf said, skin, he's a skin, skin changer. Walker. Skin changer. Skin, skin oh, skin changer. Skin changer. Skin walker is something else. Oh, yeah. There's mm -hmm. like 19 ways to say it. But he's I know. I know. Skin mm -hmm. changer. Yeah. Um, this what did you think also... about, yeah, having a, it, another I side character? I love him. Yeah. Because he was I love that he's... Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But also... The food packages he put together for them, I was salivating. I was like, that's so mm -hmm. generous. This guy lives by himself. He's clearly like on some little farmstead where he's harvesting mm -hmm. his own honey. Mm -hmm. And then he's just like giving it all to them, even I'm though they're not even parties. very they're not even very grateful. And How? manners is so important. How not just him, but like even Bilbo in the first chapter or this whatever, early chapters. How do these characters have kitchens stocked full of food but with no refrigerator? Like I don't understand that technology. Well, Bilbo um, gets meat delivered from the butcher every week. And wow. it's probably, so, if we're thinking like Renaissance fair era type stuff, it's probably mm -hmm. like salted meat. So it lasts cool. longer. Cool. Yeah. I'm just mm -hmm. guessing. I did not look that up. But I also think Gandalf goes way out of his way to 
kind of trick um, Bjorn and my, into was, uh, kind of- My favorite part of this chapter. I love that part, but if I were Bilbo, I would have been like, man, he's going way out of his way to, to not be rude and surprise this guy and lead him into it. Whereas Gandalf shows up last when they go to Bilbo's house and Bilbo's just like, I don't know who these dwarves are, why yeah. they're here, why are they eating all my cake? Gandalf, maybe he's a tricksy. Maybe Gandalf knew that Bilbo needed to feel exasperated. I also I also think that no matter how much I think this I think that if Gandalf had showed up with the with the 12 or 13 or whatever dwarves behind him that Bilbo would have been like no no sir no absolutely not no, no but even here. the slow trickling of hey sure. I brought my friend with just that but Maude you make a really interesting point and I think you're probably right in that he has to be thrown to the wolves mm -hmm. um and every everything else that he's thrown to but um even at the beginning when they're saying he can't do it, that's the thing is he is a reluctant hero and he does have to be pushed into it, but he's also been raised and you, we get the backstory of all of the hobbits and he does have that little, you know, they mentioned his um, his lineage and the Tooks, mm. which is Pippin the Took or Mary in The Lord of the Rings? I think I well, a took. Any, someone in the chat, please help me. Um, <laughs> but they're much flightier and, and more prone to adventure. And, um, oh, Mary, Pippin took. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, and he does get into a, a bunch of trouble. And, but I just love that if your entire like culture or Pippin, Pippin kind is cool. are mm -hmm. just the, just homebodies, we're eating cake, we're, mm -hmm taking a nap, second breakfast, first breakfast, potatoes, mm. mash them, mm. boil them. Put them in a stew. stew. Mm. Uh, then of course you wouldn't think that you're meant for this or that you're gonna like it because you haven't been exposed to it. I, I mean, I can say that about my experiences even on this show where I was like, wait, you guys want me to show my face on camera? That's weird. <laughs> um, and it was only you two that, and our, you know, chemistry that I was like, okay, that this is fun. I enjoy drinking wine and talking about books, but I don't know sometimes how we got you to do have point, to be pushed Rachel, into it. I don't know how we got to this point in this tangent, but yes, you're amazing. Okay. You're great. You're Stop! beautiful. You're charming. You're you to listen to, you have great insight for I don't literature. Like, no. You have to just push her in. She, you need a Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> I proved that last week. I'll prove it again this week. Rach, we're on. Let's go. I, I like this section of Yo, the book. Figure it out. <laughs> I, I, lo I loved the the way that the writing had the the convo between Gandalf and Bjorn, where he kept telling the story and then be like, "Oh, it was a, it was ten of us. Ten. That's a weird way to describe seven of you. Oh, because here's two more. That whole exercise was so much fun." Well, what read. you've actually yeah. gotten for the first time with Gandalf is a pattern that mm -hmm. has become pattern behavior where he <laughs> leads people through a deceptive path to unveil what he's really trying to get at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's a real jerk. Anyway. He is kind of a jerk in this. He's like, no, oh, no. see, yeah. I mean, not a jerk, but he's like, well, I could he's help fighting. you guys get all yeah. the way, but yeah. See ya. <laughs> I know when they get to Mirkwood and he's like, yeah. by the way, don't go off the path. Never go off the path. Stay on that path. By the way, if you don't return these Deuces. ponies, he's a bear. He might eat you. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, good mm -hmm. luck. Don't stray off the path. And uh, I'm going to peace out because I'm going to keep Seriously. the horse while you send off your ponies. Bye. Dumbledore was taking notes like we described. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, the was... stern, he's the teacher that is so stern and yep. you're like, God, I hate this teacher. Why are they pushing me so hard? And then at the end of the year or season if you're a you know this is another better call Saul thing but it's like i only pushed you because i knew you could do it kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah that's, mm -hmm. that's you need I to feel find the out. gandalf method but that is and it's like a reluctance that you know no one wants to go through shit to figure out that they can actually um live through it you know right. <laughs> so yeah. i think that's that's that is a hard lesson to learn my mom did that on me big time and that's how i learn a lot of things um, but I do think like when you deliver a message so hard, like do not stray off the track, don't drink the water, stay on the track, stay on the track. What is going to happen? They're going to stray off the track. Off the track. You're going off the track. You go. You're going off the track. Mm -hmm. what do you guys think about Mirkwood, its descriptions? I thought it was classic. I thought it was very 
You know, it reminded me of the force that they set up outside of Hogwarts with its spiders. It reminded me of a bunch of classic fantasy stuff that I've seen a million different times. Yeah, chapter eight, flies and spiders. Again, we mentioned it before at the top of the show. I love the moment with Bilbo where he was stabbing some spiders and killing some spideys. That was fun. Um, the, the, the other thing that I don't necessarily miss from any adaptations, whether they're animated, live action, whatever, of The Hobbit, but th that the book does that I appreciate in the book, and I don't, but I don't miss them being gone from other adaptations, is the description of they were in there for weeks, then two days later, then three days later, they found some, because I'm, I'm always thinking like of the logistics of that. And I'm like, that's yeah. insane that they're on this thing for months. Uh, yeah. It's nutty. And it happened again. Um, I noticed that as well, actually, Bilbo's point of view when he hasn't been caught when they're yep. in the Citadel. The yep. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, he found it really, really hard to stay hidden. For if weeks. he got trapped outside, he would go hungry. And like the way that he described that, it was just like, yeah, I guess what? maybe that's a good thing because it you know provides more of like a daunting feeling behind it all. Like this right. is really strenuous. And, this is and it it added to the Mirkwood section, like we were saying. It added to the us feeling like they were feeling. The characters yeah. were feeling so lost and so turned around, completely lost, without hope. But again, you needed yeah, that it, desperation totally. to make bad decisions. Yes, yeah. but it, it but and like I said, I appreciate that kind of language and that kind of descriptor in this story. But if I were to see it in an adaptation, I'd be like weeks there like bilbo's stuck in the elven thing for like where are they pooping where are they sleeping how are they eating how like i would be thinking about all these things i don't Seriously. i don't i don't usually um just me and jk rowling thinking where are they pooping and we have the where solutions. are they pooping how are they doing it <laughs> they can't Poopity they're pop? just mad gone actually that is a good point if he's invisible <laughs> mm-hmm is his poop invisible? I yeah. think it's invisible until Does it leaves his body. Does the fecal matter? Yeah, there you go. As soon as it leaves his body, it's visible. And then Elf steps in it and they're like, what is this? <laughs> How did that come about? <laughs> Who did this? This is not of a deer nor wolf what? variety. <laughs> Where never in the 14 realms of the Elven have there been a poop? <laughs> it smells like this? bread and honey. <laughs> and cake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thrice eaten cake. Um, I but also I think... <laughs> Oh no, I was just going to say that I, that's a medium thing too, because in, in uh, a movie, you wouldn't see the, you know, right. weeks of, I mean, maybe in an, uh, a certain genre of like eighties movies where they would show that on the screen, but mm -hmm. generally I like but that. In a montage? You get a, a montage. Yeah. yeah but you get the sense of how long it is without something that happens in some fantasy books that is a lot for me where it is just, they will describe those weeks and months to you and i don't necessarily need all of that uh this here's was per a, the perfect yeah, amount <laughs> exactly here's a great comment main ogre says when i was young some magazine had a great joke about the worst D, &D campaign ever it was the storyline of the hobbit i would <laughs> love for somebody else in the internet to know what magazine that is because i would love to look that up I, I would hope somebody in the internet somebody someone else on the internet right now would know exactly what that's from. That's amazing. Um, to further the point about Gandalf just making forced lessons learnt the hard way, uh, reading Dodo Kiwi said, yeah, Gandalf pushed Bilbo in the pool and just said, learn to swim. Yeah. yeah but say learn to swim oh. like Gandalf, Maud. Say it like Gandalf. Mm -hmm. Learn to swim. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Guys. Um, I do really want to talk about, though, uh, Bilbo's transition in this particular part. He has mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. blossomed and bloomed. What do you think about how he's being challenged? And what do you think about the dynamic where he was basically at the bottom of the runt and he was an inconvenience and Bombo was just like, I was going to leave him, to now being revered, to now um, thinking that he's going to save everyone? How are you feeling about that? It's great. It's the hero's journey. I think it's great. I think uh, uh, the action bit with the spiders where he was turning invisible and kid, you know, stabbing them and killing them and slicing at them was really fun. And then later, we'll, we, we'll talk about the section later, but when he is freeing everybody from the elven dungeons and they all turn to him and be like, yeah, this is great, Bilbo, but what are we gonna do next? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, you wanna go back? I had to do in? that too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do, do I need to come up with, you can just go back in the cage. I can lock you back up. You can sit there and think of another plan or we can just shut the hell up and go. And yeah. that was wonderful as well. And they're like, okay. Uh yeah, they also do that after the spider bit before they realize that Thorin is gone where they're like, well, 
I think. Yeah, before the the elves capture them, like what are well, what do we do? How do we find the path? What's what's the plan? And it's mm-hmm. he goes from from being sort of the joke that they're a little annoyed that they have to keep carrying him and saving him and doing all of these things to oh, he's got this magic ring. Definitely not going to be a problem later in other books. Totally fine, super safe <laughs> magic ring. Um, but he is he is clever and he does um think of ways to get out of situations that aren't necessarily what I think dwarves would think of or they all got caught twice exactly (laughs) like he's the only one that didn't get caught twice and he he also it's yeah it's this untraditional way even with the I mean Gandalf helped them with the um the trolls but his instinct is is so different from what I think a lot of classic uh heroes fantasy car- heroes would do mm-hmm. he lures them away he becomes the bait in a way that is not like haha i'm the hero and i'll lure them away and fight them it's really like i'm running for my life in the survival. trees and trying to dodge yeah just I actually, this is my only option i noticed that with gandalf with the trolls like he could have knocked their heads together he could have lit mm-hmm. up the campfire he used a very passive form of magic to let the problem sort itself out in a way like he wasn't violent at all Mm -hmm. and I I, that really stood out to me and I kind of you get a little bit of an insight that he's not really a bad guy and he's certainly not referring to violence something that I kind of like to bring up with you guys is when you have a concept like this like a retrieval of treasure but something's in the way Mm -hmm. that to me sounds like a heist where you form a team and everyone has a very specific role on that team to be able to um, retrieve this belonging or to rob something. What I what I really believe this one's missing, and we've touched upon it a little bit with the lack of personalities, Bil- uh, Bilbo is the only one with a defined role. Mm-hmm. He is the burglar. What the F does everyone else do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I kind of thought, like, even if we're not going to give them a personality, a role of how they can contribute to the group would make The Hobbit 10 times better. Bomber's sure. brawn, I get that. Thorin's the leader with the lineage, I totally get that. Can feel, uh, Philly and Killy seem like the younger of them, but what does that mean? How do they become um, a positive force within the group? I kind of wish that there was a little bit more delegation playing mm-hmm. on everyone's strengths, but also recognizing mm-hmm. weaknesses. It's just like the so- demolitions expert or whatever the right. So let me. I'll try to link. Is, I'll yeah. try to list them. I feel like Don Cheadle is demolitions. Bernie Mac is like the con man. Uh, but also, uh, so was uh, Scott Can and uh, yeah. and Casey Affleck. They were like the con men as Scott well. Scott Can, Casey Affleck, Killy Philly. All right, next. What That's else? pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is this was like a couple numbers off to this being Thorin's eleven. It's very close. It's like yeah. Thorin's twelve or thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> very close. And that would make Gandalf Catherine Zeta Jones. That would make Gandalf Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts. Okay, well... Gandalf is Julia Roberts. Or is yeah. Tariel in the movies? Ah, it's the second time I mentioned him. Darn it. The only female character who they had to make up because there's no women in this story. Is she? She's probably the cat, uh, Julie Roberts. Anyway. Okay, yeah, yeah. That makes oh, sense. we don't talk about the movies. There are some great comments in the chat. Uh, Steven, I love this because uh, in the Geek Bomb after show last week, which everyone will give y'all information about how to join that after this, but um, someone pointed out that Tolkien wanted to invent all of these languages and that was such a big reason he wrote this story was to have a play and and Lord of the Rings was to have a story for these languages and so Stephen says Tolkien always described these books as him translating other languages even names into English syllables calling the spiders lob in his songs is I believe an old uh is it lob or lobe Lob. I believe is an old English term for spider, which means she lob means female spider in Lord of the Rings, which I thought was super interesting. Mm. Yeah. Um, back to Bilbo reading Dodo Kiwi says Bilbo uses his wits over instincts. That's why Gandalf brought him along. That's a super good point. And Miss Necromancer also says, I don't want to disparage Frodo, Sam, Pippin, or Mary, but you can kind of really see how Bilbo is a bit more Trixie, as Gollum would say, and sly and clever compared to other hobbits. And I think oh, that's very 100%. true. You yeah. look at Frodo, Sam, Pippin, and Mary, and they're just the sweetest little angel babies. They're so sweet. And they're also put into situations where they have to be heroic, but that's that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of it mm-hmm. that way. I, mm-hmm. I prefer Bilbo to any other hobbit. Bilbo's my favorite hobbit. Bilbo over Frodo any day the dang week. 
And that's Sam one of the Sam Wise, I, Gamgee loves Sam's, his man. Listen, Sam's great, but Sam loves is like, man. he does love his man. Uh, Sam's wife. He just disappeared mm-hmm. for a very long time and comes mm-hmm. back and she's not moved on. She's kept the house clean mm-hmm. for him. Yeah. He must have some of that good, good. You know what I'm saying? Not recognized. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Sam can lay it down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he shows up like, I have returned. You know what I'm saying? You guys know. You guys know. Uh, all Quarantine, right. What's the next Hector. Chapters? Yeah, I know. <laughs> we all know. Quarantine. Okay. <laughs> Gabby says, I'm going to let you finish, but Bilbo Baggins was the greatest hobbit of all time. I agree. I agree. Sam wasn't married when he left? You no. would know that, Nathan. You would know. Yeah, he had to he had to build up the confidence to talk to his crush. So it's then he came back and then he crushed, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Cuz he went <laughs> yeah. out and lived a little That's true. a lot. A lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He had chapped lips, poor thing. Uh, <laughs> I know. Right. The fires of Mordor. Mhm. Frodo, don't know. I really want to rewatch the Lord of the Rings movies Maybe. now, but I'm going to do the Hobbit mm-hmm. ones first so we can okay. discuss next week. Okay. Oh. The book reveals that part of Gandalf's reasoning for leaving is so that the company would come to trust Bilbo more. Oh, really? Oh, Where in the book does I it love say that? that. Does that happen in the next section? The end, N- maybe? N- no. Because now, for better that. or worse, the narrator have... says it during this section. Oh my goodness! Yeah, uh, that I missed completely. Well, let's touch I on it that. Too. So again, this like is premeditated. Too. He kn- mm-hmm. he could obviously see the discourse that had happening. Wasn't Gandalf there when he heard everyone like? They were, they, the dwarves were bitching to Gandalf about um, Bilbo when he was all in busy. Yep, and he's like, yep. oh, broke it. Well, see, now here's the thing. I don't like that because it makes Gandalf seem like he's toying with these characters' lives. And this has all been a matter of life and death. This is uh, Dumbledore. Just, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So has I'm it like, been life and death? Because wasn't the whole point yeah. of this just to get some gold? like And get killed I mean, by a dragon and reclaim your birthright and all that other it's, bullshit? Yeah, like, it's, it's, yeah. A, it's a legacy. Right. Rev- like... He destroyed the town. Is this because he knows Mordor is brewing and they need to have like a better force with the dwarves? I don't think so. I don't think in the book they did that. I think, I think this is my take. I really do think that both the book and the adaptations like the live action movies, they do sort of play Gandalf as like, this is Gandalf when he was a bit younger and he was down to clown. He was partying. Mm -hmm. He liked to show up and have a good time. And he was like, hey, I got this map from your dad or your grandfather here's, or whatever. Here's He's, some fireworks. Yeah, exactly. Your dad. You see smoke rings? I'll blow some smoke rings. Your Wait. dad's out of his mind, but here's a map, Thorin. You should go do this thing because you totally, this is your house, bro. You should go get your house back and I'll help you. But like, I'm going to dip out whenever I want because I have Gandalf stuff to do. So he does I, have Gandalf stuff. Right. Do. I do. I do treat this as, I don't think that he is. And I know that the Peter Jackson movies were like, the necromancer, which is mentioned in this section one time, mm-hmm. they 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 tied that together to like that's Sauron. That's the okay, big bad. So that's what thing. I didn't really know because in the video games, Shadow huh. of War and Shadow of Mor- like Mordor, yeah. um, there is a character in a whole subquest of the necromancer who is bringing orcs back to life in a sure. necromancy, and they are basically like zombies. So I didn't. Are those know- games are those games also set in the New Line Warner Brothers like? movie universe or are they separate but they still are the the tolkien i don't even know i think it's warner I brothers the, okay. i think it's warner brothers and, and supposed it's to be, um, yeah, the same like design and all that world. yeah right right mm-hmm. so t- to that end i understand why they would make those connections but when i read the book especially and there's nothing wrong with this it's again just like george lucas when he did his first star wars he had no idea darth vader was going to be luke's dad yeah. that's okay mm-hmm. i don't think tolkien had the whole thing planned out i think this is a fun romp and I think that when it's able to get dark, it's cool and exciting, but it's not something that he knew, hey, 20 years later, I'm going to revisit this tone. But he yeah. revisited The Hobbit and added in things. And that has been discussed that he made note that this it's, is very iconic and will be talked about more. Why did sure. he not do that with The Necromancer? That's a good point. Again, it's just George Lucas' special editions. That's all it is. He put in Hayden Christensen as a ghost. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Andy funny. Circus does Gollum in the video game, so definitely very cool. according to B Comp. Um, and apparently, the stories from Unfinished Tales with Gandalf are really great. I have not hmm. read those, but that sounds fun. Like side quest, Gandalf sort of solving, dipping in and out, and being like, "Here's a little help. Here's a little help. That'd Here you go." Cool. Yeah, it's yeah, like, I, like Quantum Leap or something, like <laughs> early I've edition. Been, he, it's just an episode. Yeah, one. exactly. I've been waiting until we finish the book because I'm. Um, 
I'm so fascinated by the timeline within the world and how everything connects, but I don't want to mm -hmm. sully this, you know, fun romp. But the second I finish it, I'm going to kind of do a deep dive on which parallels there are to Lord of the Rings and mm -hmm. the Cimmerillion Simmer and all of those books, because I find, oh, becomes wrong. It wasn't Andy Circus. Voice match? Oh, voice match. But it was supposed oh. to be that generation. But same kind, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cimmerillion sounds like an ingredient okay, that you become. cook with. Mm -hmm. it, sounds like, it sounds like cerulean. Blue. Yeah. Uh, Light so blue. What, was there anything else you guys want to talk about for that chapter, Barrels Out of Bond? I thought it was Yeah, mostly... a little bit. The escape plan. Yeah, like, that was fun. Yeah. Did you guys think that was a good one? I oh, really cool. liked it the first time I read it, and I liked it this time because it felt... Um, actually, this whole book reading it again and knowing now that I have trouble picturing things and there are certain <laughs> um, descriptions of, even um, when we read the Thrawn books or Ready Player One, there are certain action sequences where I'm like, I don't know what's happening. There's too many things. I yeah. can't really picture it. Um, this one, uh, a lot of the scenes in this, I there's a vibe to it in addition to what's visually happening around them and i think the floating in the barrels that whole sequence like i remember that so vividly from that's one of the moments i remember the most from reading them besides Gollum and Spouk. interesting but um i think maybe because yeah we've established that tolkien doesn't do character development doesn't spend time yeah. on like growth except with bilbo where it's like such an obvious like do do he's growing he's going through stuff guys mm -hmm. but um in this particular instance, he writes like instructions. So, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this is the next thing that will happen. Yeah, Made by it's this very thing. plot driven. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but it's also like really spelt out like instructions because he's talking to a, a child, a kid. Um, right. And I think the reason why this getaway plan is so good is because it is almost instructional. I will get the barrels, you will jump in the barrels. And then from there you will, you know, exit. And you're like, yes, this is the plan. It. Mm -hmm. yeah. So or to bring the oceans it. back, it's like, okay, here's the plan. And then it yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 we see it. That's a great, yeah. Don't you reckon it should have been a heist? Like, yeah. Yeah, I want somebody yeah, to- Yeah, I, I totally, vibe-wise, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. I want somebody yeah. to recut, to take the first Lord of the Rings, sorry, the first Ocean's Eleven movie trailer, where it's like, doom, 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 doom. Mm -hmm. And it's like really of cool and stylized. Of course you remember that, yeah. Do that exact music, that exact cut tone, but just have it be Gandalf and the company. Hold that thought. It and use all Hobbit movies. That would be amazing. Matt Karen, who's Matt, in the chat right now, Matt, who does all our Nerdist remixes, listen, which you're eight for years everyone too late. watching, go watch them. I, I, I get it. You're six years after the last Hobbit movie, but let's do a Hobbit Ocean's Eleven <laughs> crossover mashup trailer, please. Thanks, Matt. Middle Earth Eleven. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we can get that happening. Uh, Game Wizard yeah. says Tolkien did what Stephen King did with Gunslinger. He rewrote the book later to update the newer material, sure. <laughs> and also work. suggests it should be the Smaug job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. That's fun. That's like the good. Italian job. We'll, we'll talk about it next week, but uh, this section of the book inspired a lengthy barrel action sequence in the movies, and we'll get to mm. that next week. Oh, that was quite long, too. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, who did yeah. we just... That's a big part of what I remember from the first time, but I will be I will be watching the movies after this week so that we can... Okay. Because maybe I'll change my mind and be like, you know what? I've been talking shit on these Hobbit movies for mm -hmm. years. They're not great. I'm but not I think afraid that, to admit that I'm wrong. I think that that considering the source material, they're fine. That's my take on I it. I know. Yeah. No, I yeah. know. And yeah, and yeah. I think uh, it was we really We went a little out of sorts. Just I've only picked up, I'm looking at the feed just because we lost someone in the group. So we'll, oh, we'll no. get around it. Yeah, we're all a little bit out. Rachel is not moored. Don't be concerned. <laughs> but we will get onto that ASAP. Whatever. Uh, but Rach, it's all on Crikey. you. So <laughs> do it, do it, do it. Oh, <laughs> that man. was all I had in me. <laughs> oh, that's that's fun. not um, a knife. Then, then it <laughs> great. We, we are working on that tech issue. Don't, okay, don't worry. Okay, um, but Rach, while we've got full screen on you, talk us through. I, I want to talk to you actually really quickly about what M the cartographer says. Gandalf goes on errands, and the dwarves are essentially his uber pool. Agree, disagree, go. <laughs> Um, 
Uh, I, only in that I think he could get where he wants to go and doesn't need an Uber pool. But I do, I do like the revelation that um, that he's he's doing this so that they're left to their own devices and they do realize that Bilbo is actually the most valuable member of the team, at least so far. Cause like Thorin's very respectful and has the lineage and such, but um, yeah, I, I get, I get what you're saying about uh, that. There should be more personalities to these dwarves to differentiate them. And I do love a good heist, but hmm. that's part of why I'm actually excited to watch the hobbit movies because mm -hmm. i do know that they've flushed them out um well a little bit a little bit it's a little still, bit listen the movie there's are still... also the whole there's the whole love child we'll get it yeah, we'll talk about it i know it. We'll i know and, they, and they're and they still there. adhering to this book which again is very episodic and it's like now here's bjorn now here's that now here's that and it's like let's focus on the dwarves for a second the book is not that interested in it as we've been saying mm -hmm. and the next chapter chapter 10 is my fa is my least favorite chapter so far which way? is a warm welcome because again it's oh just, yeah it's sort of meandering a little bit boring here they are they arrive in lake town um and then the master oh, of yeah. the town thinks that they're frauds and is happy to get rid of them and they spend like two weeks in the town and i'm just like okay okay it's you just, know what yeah. i got so lost with this moment i yeah. literally thought that they were back with the wood elves again because Ooh. it was like <laughs> So that's why I felt like it was going in circles and circles because like, didn't they run to the wood elves and then the spiders came See, and then they w got into the wood elves and then they left. And listen, I was just like, I honestly thought they went back books, again. They have to have whole casts. That's what I'm saying. So that when you would hear the master of Lake Town, you'd know that's a different voice actor than the wood elf. And then you would I know also you're need to not play Pokemon Go while I'm on my <laughs> walk <while> listening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do prefer, I mean, I've, even with um, some of my thriller books that I love that have like two different narrators mm -hmm. and they have two different actors or actresses voicing them. I do love that. This one, I, I haven't had a hard time keeping track of what's going on. I think the, he's doing different voices too for, even with the dwarves, I can sort of tell mm -hmm. just based on how they're speaking, especially like the old one. Um, yeah, but <laughs> they, they all kind of sound the same to me though. He makes them sound like they're really big and slow. Yeah, they sound like giants. Yeah, and not I'm like dwarves. they're little. Yeah. Oh dear. Mm. Hector could have done a better um, job. Oh my gosh! Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. In fact, you did you find? Did more you access? <laughs> you said crikey, like in front I'm of me. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, just... that's great. It that was the first that was thing the that popped into my. <laughs> it was that. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just a quick. I do that quick, all the time. Just a quick check in with Maud. How do Australians today feel about Crocodile Dundee? Are they still so cool I, about it or hate it? I'd never seen it until about five years ago, and I was okay. kind of like really never perturbed. I was perturbed yeah. by it, and I was just like, "Oh yeah, Sorry. that you can't say that." You can't Is that say where that. that's from? I mean, no, but I think that a lot of Americans and other parts. Of I've the never world, seen it, so I just perception of Australia. I just went Hollywood. Be, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah no, it's it's dated really, really poorly. Um, like I think at one stage there is a very masculine woman, and he'd originally had an issue with a transgendered person, and so mm. decided to check by what punching her in the groin just to see if he. Yeah, this whole thing. I was watching. I'm I don't want to watch Powers that. Joke. That's like oh, an Austin Powers joke. Oh, oh right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like even Austin Powers didn't like really do that. He no, he literally time. punched it. Well, I, there was a dumb That's joke Austin at the Powers beginning. Too, of, isn't it? I think it's a beginning. No, of at Austin one. Powers yeah, one. there's there are a lot of things they that go don't. They go to the electric age well. e electric swingers pussycat Pussy cat. swingers club. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that with Robin? Which the name the Rob Robin Swallows, the name that's no, famous. that's in part two. But Got a woman it. shows that's up and she's two. like, like cigarette, and he there. goes, Right, can I get you a drink? And then he turns around and, and Vanessa Kensington's like, What are we gonna do, Austin? Where's Dr. Evil? And Austin goes, Right, babe, how about this? And then turns around and punches the woman, and everyone goes, <gasps> How Austin. did you know? He yeah, goes, yeah. Right, that's not a woman, that's man. A, that's a man. That's a baby. man, man. And then it's all of a sudden a man in the, in the yeah, outfit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <joke>. right. <laughs> There was yeah, okay. a pop-up bar themed for Austin Powers called the Electric Pussycat, whatever it's called, Swingers with Club, a terrible yeah. Austin Powers impersonator. It was uh, great. A lot. Uh, be better but speaking that as well. of things aging well or not aging well, mm -hmm. um, someone in the chat, I'm finding it right now. Brian VS says there's a certain amount of nostalgia attached to the animated Hobbit. That's true. 
I don't know if it holds up to people seeing it for the first time now. Could be true. We're still going to watch it. Yeah. But it's, it's some things hold up, but this is, that's a different one. I think from my memory of it, I haven't watched it in a few years, but um, in several years, but in a, in a, uh, what's it? a baker's dozen years we'll keep adding more dwarfs to it um <laughs> that it is it's like i think an hour and a half and it fits every beat and i think that was why i was so frustrated with the hobbit movie being broken into three i was like how in what world mm -hmm. can you and it turns out this one and we'll revisit that but uh i'm interested to see what people think yeah well just real quick chapter 11 is what is it uh uh, uh chapter 11 uh hang on the hang door on. The, on the doorstep. On the doorstep, yeah. I like that chapter. It was cool. It was bleak. It was it them was quick. You know, quick. It was them finding the keyhole with the light and the moonlight and the sunlight and everything. Mm -hmm. I I enjoyed it. That them like. I mean, it was a penny drop moment again. Bilbo's yeah. like, doo -doo 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 -doo. ding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was great because he's so clever. Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, it happened so like nonchalantly. Like he was just like, da -da 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 -da, and it kind of just like falls in his lap. Like not not necessarily like. I don't know. Is that is that what would you define that? That is clever. Is that intelligent? Is that wise? Like, how do you just know things? Uh, I think I it's think, uh. Go ahead. Charm and luck. I think it just it's like a, the charming nature of the stories that Tolkien every chapter or every couple of chapters comes up with a really clever. I don't know if they ever did it before in fantasy or fiction or whatever because he is so much like the the grandfather of of this type of high fantasy. It's really clever and I and I and I really dig it. And again, I feel like I've seen it a million times before with the hidden passageway and open yeah. sesame and the you know, the sun has to even Indiana Jones, he has to go into the map room and the sun mm -hmm. has to hit the thing to show the location. And so it's like mm -hmm. it's all gravy. I, I dig it. I enjoy it. I think it's it's, it's gravy, solving baby. puzzles. It's crazy. <laughs> it's it's solving puzzles, right? He's great, he's good with the riddles, he's quick on his feet. It's sort of this quickness that is oh i see this almost um like that instagram fil this is such a i'm not even gonna but the the gibberish filter where some people can read it and immediately it's like oh yeah oh, I i've done it uh I've solving puzzles was, solving. i i don't know driver and it was so like oops fear and i was like that's not in me but some people get it within two seconds and i yeah. think that there's a a visual element to it and solving puzzles um visual learner but yeah and I, I feel like as far as puzzles go i must prefer the riddles moment with Gollum than i did like trying to align this sure. um and like and again i draw back to harry potter because there's so many prevalent like uh, comparisons but all of the philosophers stone like the sequence of puzzles that they had to get not only to get into level three with the three-headed dog um yeah, the three-headed dog, but also the sequence of events. Like there, if you had to break down that with heist, you know, Hermione is the brains. Ron, you know, is the um, strategist. Almost. No, the mm -hmm. strategist. Yeah. Like he plays yeah. chess. And so he learned how to strategically play chess to yeah. win. Um, Harry was in the Quidditch team. So it was a flying challenge. And again, mm -hmm. you're playing to everyone's strengths where strengths. one person right. couldn't do all of it, but a group combined has mm -hmm. the ability to pass everything. And I, I, I still feel like it's now really swinging in the direction that it's just Bilbo is the only one who's bringing anything to the table and it feels really unbalanced. Yeah, I have a quick question for both of you because I've been thinking a lot about this while reading this book and I've also been watching the films. If, if you hypothetically were to introduce this or, or recommend this to a new reader, let's say that they are younger, let's say that they're kids, let's say that you're sharing this kind of fiction or, or story with a, a kid or like a younger reader, YA or whatever, do you do this first or do you do Harry Potter first? What's the order that you would introduce these worlds to that kid? Harry Potter first every really? single time. It's a much better written book. But don't you worry that- I would almost, yeah, I would right? probably, cause I, I read this. And I agree with you, Maude. I think it is written better. So it is you better. And I'm gonna challenge I think it challenges you more. I think what you're trying to say is, is that these books kind of age, well, Harry Potter ages too fast between the books. So it starts off as a kid's book and then mm. very much has like some very sure. adult themes. Whereas sure. this one kind of stays a little bit more kid friendly. The Hobbit, yeah. Mm. But I'm but talking Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, yeah. I'm going this to would... Gandalf my kids and I'm gonna be like, push, here are some life lessons, learn okay. about them. 
They may be harsh. So you may have to talk them, about trauma. But so you're like, going to hand them the Lord of the Rings, the Return of the King first and be like, here's the deep end of the pool, kid. No. <laughs> Read this. <laughs> I want to give them a chance. Okay. No, but as, as far as like, you know, the the themes of the book, I actually right. think that... Uh, I would go with The Hobbit at like, I don't know, know if I would even like them. eight or eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And then... 10 or 11 is when you get into Hobbit or Harry Potter territory, same age. Although Narnia yeah. too, which yeah. we've always said, like there, it, it depends on the kid too, right? Yeah. I got into Narnia on the kid and what they're into. Nine. Yeah. yeah. Apparently Narnia, then Hobbit, then Harry Potter, and then see from there. I think, I think, I think that would be my okay. path as well. I, at the moment, wouldn't want to put my teenage children through uh, the Lord of the Ring trilogy. Okay. Okay. Because I, I never got to through them. Yeah, I'm I want them to the enjoy Hobbit. reading. Uh, so this is my my parents' plan of attack. Like mom said at 13, she was like, I was going to put you on The Hobbit. I thought it was too slow. She yeah. bought me the first Harry Potter book. And so Done. I learned to love reading. Smart. And mm -hmm. as soon as that was challenged and like that was overcome, then, then I could dive into all the other things. Okay. But to start at something that isn't like a sure thing, you can actually disrupt their their passion yeah. for reading. And they're like, I don't like it. Mine was Nancy Drew. That was my first mm. one. Mine which was a comic book. So I will, if I ever It a kid, still is comic books. It is still. I'll stick to yeah. comic books. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, 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 good. What's and, our and, homework, Mon? Oh, yeah. we've got some. Uh, we've got to read the rest of the book. Finish this book. Also, we've got a little bit of added homework, which is super exciting. We're going to be watching the 1977 animated Hobbit together. This is when you know that Rachel bosses us up because when she talked about the whole animated <laughs> series, the first two movies, she made it an actual requirement for us to all watch it. So we're going to do it together next Tuesday, the 28th of what month are we? <laughs> April. What is this? Is it? Okay, cool. On your April. I had to think about it. Yeah. 28th of April at 5 p.m. Pacific. We're going to be on Twitter. Join us right at five o'clock. We're going to press play on the animated Hobbit movie and we'll be live tweeting using uh, the hashtag Nerdist from home. Mm -hmm. Apparently this is available on a bunch of different outlets. It's not too much money, like $2.99. So get involved in that one, especially if you haven't seen it. It will only enhance book club because we're going to be weighing in on it the next day on Wednesday. Cool. And then of course, since this is the last of the book, we're going to need another book. What should we read next? Tweet us at Nerdist or at any of us. We've got at Rachel Hine, at Hector is funny. I'm at Maud Garrett. Give us some book suggestions. And then what's so cool is that Nerdist Book Club doesn't stop here. We actually now officially have an after show that takes place in the Geek Bomb Discord. It is a perk requirement when you join up to Geek Bomb's Patreon for the $5 tier or higher. When you do that, you get Discord access. There is a little subsetting, which is Geek Bombs. It says Book Club, and it's a call. Head over there. Rachel, Hector, and I will be in there, and we'll be doing a half-hour Q&A where we'll be talking about The Hobbit and what we're reading and all fun stuff there. So get involved with that one because it means that we get to kind of talk to each other instead of just reading comments. And I really, really enjoy doing that because there's a really great community there. All right, guys, uh, are you excited to finish this book? Final thoughts? Smaug. Oh, it's Smaug time, baby. Yes. This dragon better not drag on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ma, don't worry. It's a, it's a delightful. Yeah, exactly. It's a delightful. That's my part third of the book. applause to you, Ma. I cannot wait uh, for, um, uh, for us to get to that section, but I'm scrolling up right now because before we leave, I want to read one, one more comment from Steven, which is so good. Yeah. I can't let it go by. Here we go. Normally, Bear dudes in queer lodging. Oh yeah, means I, something I lost completely it. Completely <laughs> different to me. That's so funny, Stephen. Well done. That's a if great. If you joke. actually, if you scroll back through this, like what around twenty five minutes, you ago can see or your so, reaction. Yeah, and I go, go. Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's but true. it was very funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alrighty, on that note, you guys uh, have fun. <laughs> we'll see you guys at the after show. If not, see you same time next week. Finish the book. And I'll see you also, we'll see you all Tuesday, 5 p.m. to do the Tweeting Along Nerdist at Home for the animated movie. Yes. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye. Sorry, not sorry. Bye. Bye.